Hello and welcome. My name is Tommy Mertel and I am a full stack Ruby on Rails developer. So what does full stack mean? Well, it is front end, back end, and sometimes server. What does that mean? Well, first, you need HTML. HTML is the cornerstone of nearly every beginner's journey to making anything on the web. Or so it is as it's advertised. The problem is, there's actually a little bit more that you need to know before you get to HTML. What is it that you need to know? Well, first, you need to know minimalism. What is minimalism? Minimalism is something you will love and you will hate. You see, there's something going around called user experience. And it's a very, very annoying term. Because they act like it's some type of degree or a special status. When all it is really is you learned about art theory and you focus on minimalism and how many things the user interacts with. That's all it is. That's all user experience is. Minimalism is the act of using the least, uh, nope, least amount of stuff on a page to get the job done. Okay, so you know what minimalism is. Now, what is art theory? There are a few things in art theory, and there's actually a lot more, but knowing the three basics are very important to creating a good website. The first is... I... Direction. What is I direction? Well, it's where they go from over here to over here with colors. Now, what does that mean? To be honest, it literally just means they go from the left upper corner to the bottom right corner. And that's basically what that means. That's all of what it means to control the eye direction or art flow is another word for it of the painting that you're putting up on the website. It's simply taking their eyes from the left down to the right. Now, how do you do this? Well, simply light hue to dark hue. That's it. So you pick one color and you use the lightest hue of that color in the left upper hand corner and you use the darkest hue in the bottom right hand corner. Now, why is that a standard rule? They will always read, users will always read from left to right. Now, depending on whether they're in a different country, that, that may differ. But they still, for the most part, read left to right. It's just that some languages are written down while English and other languages found in the more western side of the world normally go from left to right even if it goes from up to down it will still be read left to right 
Now the other one is symmetry. I don't know how to spell this. Symmetry. Or same sizes on a grid. Basically. Essentially, you have evenly spaced items that have the same height or the same width on a grid system so you have a box here then on the grid system that would mean you'd have another one of these boxes down here that's what that means so you want to keep things aligned and that's because the human eye loves patterns the reason why we can make so many things and do so many things and recognize so many things is because the human mind is developed to see patterns in things this does come at a disadvantage for instance we see patterns in things where there's actually no pattern to be found uh, such as a human face on Mars, which is a huge conspiracy theory, but it's been proven that we'll see two apples and a banana and think something really dirty. And that's called pattern distinguishing. And what's the last thing? Well, the last thing is actually... Less is more. This isn't really... This isn't a solid art theory. It is an art theory, but it's more with black and white paintings or emphatic photographs. But essentially what this means is it's very similar to minimalism but the website shouldn't be covered in 90 different billion colors. You should choose three to seven colors. That's it. That's what you need to know before you start coding in HTML. And the reason why you should know this before you start coding in HTML is because it makes your life a lot simpler when you're making websites and the more you get used to this the better your websites will look now let's talk about the technical aspects after HTML of course you need CSS and then you need JavaScript but JavaScript does not equal jQuery They're similar, but not the same. jQuery is an extension of JavaScript. Spend a ton of time in JavaScript, because you're going to need it. It's going to be everywhere. It's the only way that you can do things live. With the Ajax request, which is something that you'll learn later in the life of JavaScript, that's how you make things live. That's how you make a chat system. And that's how everything was done before sockets were made. And sockets is something you learn in a back-end language. Now, that's the three basics. Okay? You can go into CSS and look up SAS or LAS or Bootstrap. And first two are preprocessors, which means it takes your code and turns it into CSS. Bootstrap is just a CSS library. But those aren't really needed. You need to learn the core CSS. And then with HTML, you have things like Haml and Jade and things like that. And those are also pre
preprocessors for HTML. It just makes the code look better and cleaner. So once you've learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, what do you need to learn for next? Now the first thing that anyone says is either you need to learn database or you need to learn API or you need to learn the backend which is completely wrong you need to learn the backend you can learn the database later you, you can learn API later in fact if you learn the backend first the API will be easier now a lot of people ask, which background should I learn? There are five, the five kings, Ruby, Python, Java, C Sharp, and PHP. The five kings of languages. So what should you learn? The one that you feel most comfortable with. And how do you know that? How do you know which one you will feel comfortable with the most? And why isn't there a specific reason to learn just one of these and just go by feel? Well, that's because they're basically the same. They do the same things but in a different way. For instance, in Ruby, you have a method. And this is something you learn whenever you learn JavaScript. And it ends like this. And Python, you have almost the same thing. The only difference is the ending word. Now if you paid attention to JavaScript in PHP that should look very familiar. PHP is so like JavaScript it, it is ridiculous. In fact, I'm, I'm very surprised that the two haven't merged. Anyway, it doesn't really matter which back end you choose so long as you're comfortable with the one that you choose. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. But there are some certain aspects that you should know. Ruby comes from the East. It is an Eastern coding language. It was developed in Japan, I believe, and it has been translated for us English users to use. The rest of them were made with English. Ruby is different from the rest of them. What makes it different is its intent is developer happiness. It's not the best code, it's the best and most comfortable language that it can possibly be. So why wouldn't everybody choose that? Well, <clears throat> it's not as old as the other languages, except for PHP. PHP is like the spam of the internet. It's everywhere. Thanks to WordPress and Joomla, it's everywhere. If you learn PHP, you can pick up a job like that. It, it is practically everywhere. Now the problem with that is that that's where most people go. And that's where the highest amount of competition is. The second highest is Java. Now why is Java the most compared to PHP? Why is it second? Because of mobile development. Because you can make mobile games on it. And one of the transitions into game development 
is I want to make a mobile game because there's a lot of people who see mobile games as a way to make a paycheck and so they start out try trying to learn Java and this may not be true for all of Java's but it's true for a good portion of them and then you have something like the Spartan games but in coding style whoever can make it realizes that it wasn't about the game in the first place they can make a game but they don't want to anymore or they can make a game but the game that I make isn't good enough so they just stop doing it or they don't see a point in making the game because they can make more money as a Java developer now the last two Python and C sharp <laughs> Python thank you college that's 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 pretty much why Python is massive Python and C sharp are core languages that you learn inside of college because you can introduce common concepts in an easier way with Python and then you can move on to more advanced stuff with C sharp now that's not to say that it doesn't have its own benefits Python is primarily used for such things as big data. C Sharp is used by the government. And yeah, anything labeled government is massively overcomplicated. As you know, I am a Ruby developer. I don't like to overcomplicate things. So, <clears throat> now that you've learned a back language, where do you go from here? Well, you're not done with the back language. In fact, you're not done with JavaScript. Testing. You need to test the ever-living crap out of your code. You really need to test your code. Because I guarantee you, if you haven't learned testing up until this point, your code is like at the scum part of a barrel. It's... It's... It's the most vulnerable thing ever. And along with testing, you need to learn the top 10 of OWASP. What is OWASP? OWASP is, I forget the exact acronym definitions, but essentially it's a center that's open source where the top security problems of the world for web development go here and the way to prevent that go here so not only do you need to test the code so that you account for most of the cases if not all of the cases but you also need to make sure that you can't get hacked which is what a wasp is trying to prevent so now after you've had that what do you do? Well, to be honest, you learn a framework. Now, frameworks usually go like this. Roar or Ruby on Rails or Django use a different or or I'm just gonna put I don't know because uh, Java I can read Java I can understand Java I cannot write Java so I never got into Java and then C sharp is usually ASP.net <clears throat> and then PHP is WordPress or Joomla that's usually what these languages go to whenever they finally bring their stuff back up online so I originally asked what is a full stack developer it's a person who can use one of these? 
That's the simplest definition. You need to learn this and this and this and this and this in order to do this. Now, there are some other definitions and other things that you need to learn after you learn these frameworks. And they're two different things. You have work methodologies and develop methodologies. What are these? Well, primarily you want to look at Scrum. You, you can look at Scrum all day and all night and then you can look at other work methodologies such as Agile and glass and crystal and whatever name they want to give it but essentially the root comes from scrum whatever you do you do not want to do waterfall which is probably what you've been doing up until this point waterfall is have an idea develop the idea see if it crashes that's it that's waterfall. You don't want to do that. That costs billions and millions and thousands, depending on which company that you go with. You do not want to know waterfall. What you do want to know is Scrum. What is Scrum? Well, Scrum basically takes all the different features of a website, every little tiny feature that you have, and it breaks it up into post-it notes. And then you discuss what should go in those post-it notes and each person gets a post-it note. And then they come back, review what happened, see if there are any bugs, fix the bugs, rediscuss about the current post-it notes, see if any changes should be made. And then if there's no changes, they take the new post-it notes, the ones they haven't completed, do those. Same process. And you do it until you get up to the most complex, which is basically the finishing of the website. As you do this, you can actually make a website that's viewable and usable most of the time. This way, marketers can test it to see if they're wasting their time or not. Now, what are develop methodologies? Develop methodologies are how you go from A to B. How you first decide the code, how to test the code, what vulnerabilities are in the code, and how to optimize the code, and how to finally test the code again. That's it. That's what develop methodologies is. Once you learn this, once you learn all of this, you're not done per se because in the programming world you're never done but you're you're pretty much there you, you, you can actually at this point at this point right here you can call your jun you, you you can call yourself a junior full stack at this point you can just call yourself a full stack. <clears throat> now, the problem with full stack is because there's no set definition, a lot of companies like to throw some extra things in there, such as AWS, which is Amazon Web Service. What is this? It's the ability to basically fill in a server administration position. It's an entirely different job and companies have wonderfully deemed it necessary for the developer to do this as well. And the problem with that is the people who actually know full stack usually only know how to do the server that they test on in the first place and increasingly we've seen some Amazon server development but most of the time we're talking about Linux 
and we're talking about Windows Server 2000 whatever because I think the newest one is like 2012 or something um, and that's just that is an entirely different job all on its own server administration is who gets what privileges and who gets uh, who gets to do what but I th oh I missed something um, in this before frameworks and before testing you need to learn either SQL or no SQL databases <clears throat> what's the difference between SQL and no SQL easiest example is in MySQL you select everything from a database okay and then you pick what you want from the select all in NoSQL you just request the object you you don't even waste time trying to select everything and then finding the object inside of everything you literally just request that item and it usually gives you now what are the benefits and the downsides no SQL is pretty fast but also a lot less secure because no SQL allows things to be written on the front end SQL has to be written at the back end which for most developers would be the Ruby Python Java C sharp and PHP there you can learn either one but you're gonna find more work with SQL so back to servers <clears throat> server administration is about determining the level of permissions and keeping the hosting software up to date see cuz big businesses host websites on their own servers which is really good for security purposes now the problem with this is usually they have it set up in a very specific way and whenever you come in you have to learn all this stuff and whatnot but essentially you just need to know how to run either an Amazon server, a Linux server, a Windows server. And the best way to do that is to simply get your own server and just start coding on it. And then host your own websites on it and just play around with it just as you did with the other languages while you were learning with them. That is uh, the business definition of a full stack that is the corporate one that is not the individual one that's a corporate one we're talking about businesses that have like 20 floors and above so what do you do after you become a full stack developer well you're not full stack you're not senior full stack you notice how I left out the senior part you're not senior you're still a junior but you can just remove the junior part once you learn those methodologies because you know how to work with others but you're still not senior because you haven't actually worked with others knowing all of this makes you a full stack developer I know this, 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 the testing framework for Ruby on Rails is RSpec, 
this is implemented automatically with most of rails and what's not I can do on my own I know this I know this I know this specifically the 2012 version and I know some of these I am a full stack developer how do I apply to positions as a junior full stack developer because I haven't worked in the industry so while I may know all these technologies and it's fantastic that I do you can't apply to industries saying you're a full stack developer because you will not meet the requirements that most of them have now what's the easier way to submit your applications start as a junior front end you always just as you learned the stack you want to start from the front end and move to the back end that's it I'll see you in the next video